have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. And today we've traveled all the way to Kisi County. The main crops produced in Kisi County are maize, bananas, beans, potatoes, tea, sugarcane, coffee, and horticultural crops. In the village of Amaiga in Nyaribari Central, we meet 27-year-old Paul who lives on this five-acre farm with his father. But he needs our help. So we set up our base camp and go down to work. Most young people see farming as a dead career with long hours and hard labor. However, it doesn't have to be that way. With good information, investment, and support, young farmers can make farming into a good and profitable career. Paul is a university graduate who studied accounts in university, but has chosen farming as his career. He's got cows, chickens, tomatoes, capsicum, and onions, but they're not doing well and needed some expert advice. We wanted to find out why he chose to become a farmer and live the city life. Uh, so Paul, how long have you been farming? I've been farming for one year. Uh -huh. And did you like it? Yes. Paul, most young people are not interested in farming. What made you start farming? It's the life, the challenges that I was facing when I was answering it there in Nairobi. You've been to school? I've done my accounting degree, become from Ichaton University. Yeah. I graduated the year 2011. From there, I went to Nairobi. I did some, some job there of insurance. I was also at, at Chester. Then, as I was assessing the losses there, with some farmers, I realized the business is, you can fetch good money. From there, I decided to come back home to talk with my father. He told me if you have a plan, you can proceed with your plan and then you can see how, how far you can go. So what do you have in the farm? I have capsicum, I have tea, black tea, I have bananas, I have cows, goats and then ants. So what problems do you have on the shamba? The, the problem there mainly is diseases and the pests. So how would you like shamba shape up to help you? I want to help me with the experience, exposure. If his expert advice you need, Shamba Shape Up is here. And you've come with experts, we're going to work with you, Paul, to make sure that you are truly shaped up. Uh, thanks. Feel at home. Thank you so Thank much, you. Paul. Thank you. Yes. Yes. All right. But first, I need to find out how healthy the soil is. Because a soil test is so important, we have asked the experts from Soil Cares to help us do one before we do anything else on this chamber. Their trucks travel all over the country, so farmers don't have to go far to have their soil tested. To collect a good soil sample, always use a soil auger. But if this is impossible, then you can use a panga. Put the soil into a bag and take more samples from about 20 different places around the farm, where the crops are grown, and this should be in a zigzag pattern. Label the bag with your name, number, size of the farm, and what you want to grow. Soil Cares has a lab which can come to your village to make it easier for you. And we have the results. 
So team, you've collected the cell samples, you've taken them to the lab. Yes. So now what are the results? Yeah, for Paul Maragia's farm, 0 0.25 acres, yes. want to grow high yielding tomatoes. Yes. Your soil pH is 4.6. Uh, when you look at the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium level and other nutrients, your nitrogen is low, your phosphorus is okay and your potassium is low. Otherwise, micronutrients are just okay in your farm. Then when you look at your soil health, the amount of organic matter in your soil, yes. it is okay. And so now what would you recommend for him? Looking at the soil pH, is at 4.6. 4.6 is too low for growing any crop, yeah. especially tomatoes. Yeah. Therefore, you will have to add agricultural lime 650 kilograms in order to increase your pH for it to be good for tomatoes. Just one advice, when you're applying lime, ensure that you wear a dust mask and also you have gloves. Then apply before rains, one to two weeks before rains. Then dig, incorporate it in the soil. Do not mix lime and compost or lime and fertilizer. Mr. Tim, I'm asking, do you dig before you put lime or you put lime, then you dig? What you're supposed to do, you apply lime, then you dig. That will help you to incorporate lime into the soil. So, how oh, the, the the quantities? Quantities are recommended here for your farm, which is 650 kilograms. Soil fertility, you have to add 25 kilograms of mare fertilizer, 17, 17, 17, at planting. Then at top dressing, you'll have to have seven kilograms of CAN. On organic matter, as I said, uh, we still advise you to continue using organic matter because it will improve the structure of your soil. Yeah. So that is it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. For a long time, Paul has been using DAP when planting. But having had his soil tested, we knew this had to change. DAP has made his soils too acidic. So to teach him how to change his soil for the better, we have invited mayor fertilizers to explain more. Margaret, Paul would like to have some very, very healthy onions. And I saw you having a look at them. What did you observe? A few observations that I made when I went around the farm. Yes. One, I realized that some of your crops are stunted, they're dwarf and stunted. This might be due to deficiency of most likely nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, yeah. among other micronutrients. Yes. Yeah. Now, we took Paul's soil for a soil test and yeah. the results are out and I'm sure you've read them. It's true. It's true. I've okay. gone through the results. Yes. And what I have just uh, concluded from the results, I have already observed that the pH is too low. The pH is 4.6. That is too low. And that's why maybe you used fertilizer in your crop, but yeah. still you can observe some stunted or dwarf crops due yeah. to pea deficiency. Also, the level of nitrogen was low, the level of, of potassium was low. Yeah. That's what I observed from the soil testing results. What should he do to get a better crop? I'd like to advise you yes. on the best fertilizer that you're going to use that will supply the enough nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium for your onions. And the fertilizer that I'm going to rec recommend after going through the results is Mayer NPK 171717. 17. You are going to use at a rate of 20 grams per plant. This yeah. bottle top is 10 grams, so you are going to use two of these per crop yeah. Yeah, during planting. Yeah. Thereafter, four weeks after planting, you are supposed to apply CAN at yeah. the same rate. How many bags are you expecting from this, from this chamber? I'm expecting 50 bags of onions. 50 bags of onions? Yes. Is that possible, Margaret? And the current condition they are in? Uh, just to be very frank, 50 bags per onion at this condition, it's not possible. 
How much can he get right now? Right now, around two bags. From 50 to two bags. Can you imagine that? All right. <laughs> so now, if he follows what you have recommended, mm -hmm. what does he expect to get? Depending on the variety, the onion variety, you are going to get around 30 bags from this portion. 30 yeah. to 40 bags. All other factors being favorable. That is all the other management practices. For example, timely weeding, crop protection. You have to protect your crops from diseases, from pests. You are going to get from 30 to 40 bags. Yes. How does that sound? Good. Mm. Yeah. 40 bags. 40 bags. Almost near your mark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to do that? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Margaret. Now Paul knows if he fixes the soil acidity, uses the right fertilizer, and weeds his crops well, he can get an increase of 38 bags of onions. Paul recently started his chicken business. He started with 10 chickens and now he has 50. And he's hoping by Christmas time he will have at least 500 bags. Dr. Were, a vet, has come to give him some advice on disease control. Expert. Yes. So what advice would you give him? Yeah, I can see he's ambitious. He wants to reach at least 500, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For you to reach that number, you must have a planned regime. Yes. Because there, there are diseases. And the most important poultry disease to be controlled, especially in rural poultry, is Newcastle disease. Mm -hmm. And so what is the Newcastle disease? Newcastle disease is a serious poultry disease that is considered the most important eh, to be controlled because of the mortality that, that it causes when it, when it attacks the flock. It can clear your flock so that you start anew. Newcastle disease is a disease which spreads very fast and can kill all your chicken. Chickens with this disease will have the following symptoms. Swelling of the head and neck, greenish diarrhea, sticky discharge in the eyes and nose and wheezing. The egg production may reduce. To stop Newcastle disease, there are many things you can do. This include keeping the chicken run clean, using disinfectant in a foot bath at the door, giving chickens room to move in, and having a supply of clean air, healthy food, and enough water. There's a Newcastle vaccine which does not need to be kept cold all the time. The Avivax vaccine can be kept at room temperature for up to three days. To vaccinate, simply pour one drop into the chicken's eye and wait for the chicken to blink it in. Remember, controlling Newcastle disease will result in more chicks and more income to your home. You do not have to wait to sell or eat your chicken or eggs after they are vaccinated with this vaccine. Uh, we need to get more young people interested in farming. Mm -hmm. hmm? And what better way to do that than using the gadget everybody loves? The mobile ah, phone. Ah, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The phone. Welcome back to Shemba Shepherd. We're still here in Amaiga village in Kisi County. With our young farmer Paul. There is lots to learn, so let's get back to work. Before the break, we had advised Paul on his soil health and fertility. We had shown him how he can vaccinate his chickens from the Newcastle disease. And we still have a lot more advice for him. Feeding the cows well isn't all you need to get a lot of milk. We need to know how to get rid of all the ticks and worms and give the supplements they need. Dr. Kiru is here to have a look and give his expert advice. Paul, what problems are you having with your cows? Diseases and uh, pests. How many liters of milk are you getting? I get five liters per day. Five liters from both cows. Kirui, you've heard from the farmer. Is that good? We talk of uh, producing five liters per day from two cows, considering that you are milking the cows twice a day. The production is a little bit down. 
Uh, when you look at your animals, there's some kind of discoloration and uh, that shows some kind of deficiency. That means uh, the mineral you've been giving either is not the right mineral or if it is the right mineral, then the quantity might be uh, less. If you want to have a healthy herd, first you look at nutrition. We have a mineral called Maclic Super and Maclic Super is meant for lactating herd. Uh, this is Maclic Super. When you use Maclic Super, yes. one thing you'll realize is improvement in production, that is in terms of milk per day. And also make sure that your cows come on heat at the required time. That is, a cow is supposed actually to uh, calf down every year. That means a farmer will be getting one calf from uh, each cow every year. If you have heifers, you give Maclic Plus. Once you give your heifers, you guarantee the farmer that uh, he's going to realize fast growth and also uh, early maturity. That means the heifer should come on heat after 14 months. How do you use these minerals? For young heifers, you give 100 grams per day. Mineral supplements are important for cows to come on heat on time, be in calf and stay healthy. You have to look at your general management as a farmer. And this includes hygiene and other routine management. Uh, one of the things I've realized here is that you have problems with ticks. That is on tick control and also deworming. Uh, when it comes to tick control, you're supposed to be spraying your animals every seven days. Ticks spread dangerous diseases, which kill cows or cost a lot to treat. It is much better to stop ticks by spraying every seven days. Uh, worms also usually gives a lot of challenges to farmers. Like one of your animals I've uh, checked and uh, I saw that there are some signs of uh, worm infestation. If cows have worms, they cannot produce much milk. Cows with rough hair or diarrhea or hair falling out have worms. Uh, if you deworm your animals with Nefluk, you do it after every three months. Before you give your dewormer, you have to measure the live weight of your animal. And we measure the live weight by using uh, a weighing band. After getting the, the, the live weight of your animal, then on the label of your dewormer, you will read the instructions. Like for example here, you've been told 80 to 100 um, kgs, you give 10 ml of the product. Yeah. And that will be enough for that animal. It's very important actually to measure weight because if you give uh, small quantities or you underdose, there's a problem of cross resistance. That means the worms later, even if you give higher dose, you might not be in a position to control those worms. So the best thing is you do the right thing at the right time. Measure your animals and give the right dose so that you prevent these problems of resistance. How many days should I wait to start using the milk? So if you give your animals Nefluk, you are not supposed to use that milk or even sell that milk. Yes. Up to 72 hours is over. Do I use the milk for other animals? Unless you've dewormed those animals. But if you've not dewormed them, then it's also not recommended. Can you guarantee the farmer that he's going to recoup back his expenditure if he uses these products? Good production, good herd, and also profitable, then you have to invest. And investment means you have to use these products. After using these products, you guarantee a farmer that you are going to get what you deserve and also improve on your profits in the farm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome. To get the best from his cow, Paul needs to control the ticks and worms and feed his cow with good minerals and protein as well as good fodder and dairy meal. Paul loves to do a bit of reading in the evenings after being in the shamba all day. He uses a small D-light lamp. Shamba Shepard thought it would be a good idea to upgrade him. Uh, Paul, how come you don't have electricity? I've noticed you don't have electricity. Yeah, because you don't have a transformer. Oh, a transformer? Yes. Now I brought you something to upgrade. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's called a solar home system. Yes. Steel from Delight. Yes. So here. Ah, thanks. The Delight D20 solar home system is a personal power grid for your home or business. It contains a solar panel, mobile charging battery pack, two solar lights, two light switches, and a portable lantern. Dual light settings provide power for eight hours on the high setting or up to 15 hours on the low setting. We all got up and went to install the D-Light solar system. 
Our handyman Kariz was here to help us install it. Installing it is very easy. First, nail the solar panel on the roof. Then, connect its wires to the battery and screw the battery on the wall. Run the lighting wires to where you want the lights to hang. And screw the switches on the wall. There are two extra sockets so you can add two more hanging lights. A lot of young people are now so addicted to their mobile phones. It feels like they have lost a limb when they are not with them. So, we invited Martha, a young farmer who uses a mobile phone to market and improve her farming, to talk to Paul. Paul, Martha is a young farmer yes. and she's here with us today to talk to you about something very important. Today I want to talk about the internet. Internet is the largest world interconnected group of computers. So how can Paul access the internet? Uh, Paul can easily access the internet at uh, Cyber Cafe at the nearest town center yeah. or he can use his phone to access the internet. Do you have a phone that can access the internet? Yes. Can we have a look at it? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. This this one can access the internet. So how does uh, how does Paul now access the internet using his phone? Paul can access the internet by buying internet bundles. So buying yes. the internet bundles, he'll simply use a scratch card, load normal credit. To buy internet bundles, dial star 544 hash and choose the bundle you want. A daily bundle is best for Paul's budget. When you have chosen your bundle, the amount will be taken from your airtime and your bundle is ready to use to look up diseases and how to make a good business plan for your farm. Let's go back to the internet and farming. You are a young farmer. Have you ever used the internet to help you in your farming? Yes, I usually use the internet to help me in my farming and I also want Paul to use the internet to help him in his farming. How can I use internet to market my products in Kenya? That is very easy. Yes. Social sites like Facebook can help you market your products here in Kenya. Yes. You can easily post your, the picture of your products, yes. then you can get orders. So Paul, do you use the internet on your phone? Yes. What do you use it for? I use it to communicate to friends. Mm -hmm. Well, he can also use that to share the same information with other farmers. Mm -hmm. For example, if he's, a, he's having a problem with his tomatoes, he can simply Google the problem that he has. Mm -hmm. For example, he has the problem of tutor. a bacterial wilt and tutor. So he can Google that and get the information, more information about that and how to tackle that. The internet has helped me in getting information and also marketing the products that I have at the farm. Martha went on to show Paul how to use M-Pesa to buy goods. Once you put M-Pesa into your account, you can use mobile phone to buy goods in town instead of carrying money with you. To use Lipa and M-Pesa, select M-Pesa. Scroll to Lipa na M-Pesa. Select Buy Goods and Services. Enter the till number. Enter the amount. Enter your PIN number and then press Send. Now, Paul can get help with his onions after Shamba Shape Up have left. And he can also buy fertilizer he needs without carrying any cash in his pocket. Thank you, Martha. Today we have learned that farming is for everyone, graduates and non-graduates. And when young people embrace farming, they'll get information on good seeds, modern technology and financing, which can solve the challenges of unemployment and dependency. And it's been yet another great show here on Shamba Shepa.
Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up or simply text 30606.